Hey guys, Loremaster here, and before the video, I just wanted to quickly mention that the official Loremaster Patreon page and Discord are now live, and you can find links to both in the description. It's a great community, and there are tons of Minecraft and Java developers just waiting to help you on your projects. Hey guys, what's up? Loremaster here, and welcome back to another Minecraft modding tutorial video for 1.12.2. Uh, today, we are going to be tackling the ever-challenging crafting recipes and smelting recipes. And um, lucky for you guys, I actually made it a lot simpler by creating a couple outlines that we'll be using so that we can turn this like really complicated JSON process into something that is manageable for someone who is just starting. So yeah, so the first thing you're going to want to do when creating a um, crafting recipe is come down to your assets folder down here. And um, you know, this is where we have all our textures and everything inside of our main project. You're going to want to right click on this and create a new package and just name this after assets.tm, just add dot recipe. Uh, or I guess recipes, yeah, recipes because we're gonna be doing multiple. So dot recipes, finish. And you'll have a little package right here next to all your other ones. And inside of here, we are gonna be creating a new uh, untitled text file. So right click on this, new untitled text file. And just like when we made the um, the actual textures for, um, not the textures themselves, but the JSON files to assign the textures to our blocks and items, we'll be doing the same thing except we'll be assigning crafting recipes to specific blocks and items. And um, it's a new process that we have to use JSON files, but it's just kind of a new thing that we have to do. So um, like I said before though, I have an outline for you guys. So um, after you make your untitled text file, you can just come down to um, the link in the description and you're gonna wanna go to um, my shaped crafting recipe paste bin. And this will have just, like I said, a little outline. And you can copy and paste this right here. And I'll go over this in just a sec, but copy and paste it into here. Um, and before you do anything, you're going to want to save and name it um, whatever you want your crafting recipe to be. So like, um, in this case, I'm gonna be making a crafting recipe for the ruby item that we made earlier in the tutorial series. So I'm just gonna name it ruby. Um, this is actually one of the only times in JSON files, you know, within your Minecraft mod that it doesn't matter what you name it. So um, that's like really great and really helpful. So you can name it whatever you want, but I'm gonna be naming it ruby.json and come down to your tutorial mod, um, source, main, resources, assets, uh, your mod ID, in my case, it's TM for tutorial mod and recipes. Just click here and press OK. And if we go over to our recipes package, we should see that we do have, yeah, the JSON file right here, um, ruby.json, and we can close down this text file and open it back up again. And um, now I actually have a JSON file. Yours probably won't have all this coloring and this markup, and that's because you probably don't have an extension for Eclipse that um, highlights syntax for JSON, but that's not important. As long as you follow these steps, it won't really matter. Uh, so this is our crafting recipe itself and I have a couple things that we need to fill in here But generally what you need to know is that up here It tells us that it's a crafting uh, recipe that is shaped meaning that it has a specific shape that we need to fulfill in order to craft it So um, in this case, I want to make a ruby block, you know that if we go over to our blocks I know it's been a little while but um, remember we made a ruby block here and I kind of want to make it so that if we put nine rubies in the crafting table, we'll get a ruby block um, as output. So in order to do this, uh, I'm going to fill in all these little spaces here with R's. Now what exactly does that mean? Well, you want to uh, kind of associate these three lines with the three lines within the crafting table. I'll have a little image up right now so that you can see. So essentially, think of this as the left column, this as the middle column, and this as the right col the right column of the crafting table itself. And you know, this is the top, this is the bottom, and this is the middle in terms of um, rows across. So uh, you're going to be essentially assigning variables to hold placeholder information. So in this case, I want a ruby in every single slot in all nine slots within the crafting table. So I will be placing, like I have here, RRR, RRR, and R, R, R. And this is going to, as we'll assign later, assign uh, essentially a ruby to each box of the crafting table. Um, and then down here in key is where you're going to assign what that actual key means. So in this case, we have R, right? Like I said before, that's what this is up here. So uh, what you need to change essentially is whatever your, um, your variable you put up here, change the letter down here to that exact same one. So if I put, let's say, BBR up here, um, then I would 
you know, change this one to B if I wanted to assign B to a specific item. So in this case, it's R, and uh, this is going to assign to a specific item as we have here, and this is where you need to fill in your specific information. So first, you're going to want to put your mod ID. So mine is tutorial mod. If it's been a while and you don't remember where your mod ID is, come to util and reference, and your mod ID should be right here. Mine, again, is TM. Uh, and then the name of the object that you want to uh, use to assign to the variable R. So in my case, I want these to all be rubies. So um, if we go to my, I believe it was uh, items and not, no, not items, sorry. Um, it should be init and mod items. You can see we have our ruby item right here and it's just named ruby. So I'm going to be using that. Just put ruby. So we have TM, which is my mod ID, and then Ruby is the actual object. So what this is essentially doing is assigning, like I said, this object to R, and then telling R to be in this many spaces within the crafting table. Uh, now we'll get a little bit more complex in a second, but first I want to finish off this basic recipe. So now we have to decide what the result is. So when we put this into the crafting table, what exactly are we going to be getting out of it? And in this case, um, it's going to be the same sort of idea. You're going to want to replace your mod ID right here with your mod ID, and then object with whatever you want to uh, have be the output. So like I said, I want this to output a Ruby block. So if I go to um, close on mod items real quick, if I go to util, or uh, not util, sorry, init, and mod blocks, um, we have here our Ruby block, and it's just named Ruby underscore block. So I will be putting inside of here, Ruby underscore block. And then you're going to determine right here the count. So if you want this to output 10 ruby blocks, you change it to 10. But in my case, I'm just going to have it make one ruby block. And I will save this. And once you've completed that, you have your first ever basic crafting recipe. So now that we have this outline done, we can do a lot of really, really cool stuff with it and make a lot of really unique recipes. So let's say we want to make something way more complex than just, you know, a ruby in every single slot. Let's say I'll have an image right now up on the screen, but let's say we want to have diamonds on the right side. We want um, iron on the left side and we want a ruby inside of the middle. Uh, and that would create a ruby block. Let's just say that's what the crafting recipe would be. So now we go back to our outline here and we're gonna change things up a bit. So remember that these three um, little bars up here represent the three lines of the crafting table. So we want to assign variables as they would be in a regular crafting table with this recipe we have in mind. So um, let's make all these blank for right now. So first off, like I said, we want all iron on the left side. So uh, for our iron variable, we're just going to put an I. So I, I, and I. Um, and like I said, we want a space on the top middle, a space on the bottom middle, but in the center middle, we want a ruby. So we'll put R for ruby. And then on the far right side, we want all diamonds. So we'll put D, D, and D. Um, now this might look kind of confusing if you've never done this before, but I promise you'll start to get used to it. Like I said, remember that these are the, the nine squares on the crafting table. So we have this is the left side of the crafting table right here with all I's standing for iron. We have the all D's on the right side, which stands for diamonds. And we have the R in the middle only with two spaces above and below, which stands for just a ruby right in the center of the crafting table. Um, like I said, in order to help you, I will have a visual up right now that kind of shows what it'll look like in game. But um, essentially, now that we've done this, you know, that's all great, but we haven't assigned anything to D or I. You know, we have right here, R is set to item TM Ruby, but we have nothing set for I or D. So in order to do that, we have to copy and paste this section right here, right below it. And uh, oh, it seemed to slip up there. Okay, well, if that happens, just back it up a little bit. Um, and we have an error here because we've already um, assigned R to something. So in this case, we'll be assigning I. Um, and like I said, I want I to be a, um, an iron ingot. So instead of using R mod ID, we would use the Minecraft mod ID, which is just Minecraft, A colon. And then in this case, it would be iron underscore ingot. And uh, that would assign I to an iron ingot. And of course, we'd also need to add a comma after this uh, little curly brace right here so that uh, the code knows that it needs to continue onwards. But you can see here that we've assigned the variable of I to iron underscore ingot. So um, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll do the same thing with diamond. So copy and paste this, add a, uh, a comma right after the curly brace, and just back up the I here a little bit so that it fits. And 
uh, we'll be assigning D, like I said, and instead of iron ingot, we will put diamond. So like I said, important things to keep in mind, this is your mod ID if you wanna use custom items from your mod, and this is the Minecraft mod ID if you wanna use items from Minecraft's code. So yeah, very important. Um, and like I said, same result, but uh, let's say we wanna make uh, it output three ruby blocks. We would change the cap to three, but keep this ruby block item right here. And if we save that, we now have our brand new crafting recipe. So let's go check it out inside of the game. Okay, so we're inside of the game now, and you can see here that I have in my inventory the rubies, the iron ingots, and the diamonds. So, just like we said in our crafting recipe, I'm going to come up to our crafting table here, and we want three iron ingots on the left side, we want three diamond on the right side, and a ruby right in the middle. And you should see here, there we go, our crafting recipe, and like we said before, we assigned three blocks of ruby as the output, so you can see here our crafting recipe works perfectly. And we can take these out, and these ruby blocks will function as regular, um, just regular blocks. Um, of course, I'm in creative mode, so it won't actually decrease the value, but yeah, so now we know that it actually works. Okay, so back in Eclipse, now that we've tackled a shaped recipe, I'm going to show you guys how to make a shapeless recipe, which is essentially when you're given a certain amount of ingredients and you can just put them anywhere inside of the crafting table and it will make your item and there's no need to define a shape that we have up here, also known as a pattern. And um, I've also made a guide or a, an outline, I guess, for you guys as well for this. So let me just clear off some of the stuff here. We don't need main for right now. And um, we're going to go back to our recipes package and create a new, right click new, uh, untitled text file. And uh, go back down in the description and there should be another link to a second paste bin. This one should be called shapeless crafting recipe. And I'll go here right now. And you can see right here, shapeless crafting recipe. And if you just copy and paste this into your untitled text file, and before you do anything like before, save, and you can name this, uh, I'm gonna name it Ruby2, because um, like I said, again, we're really lucky with the recipes because we don't need to name them anything specific, so whatever will help you remember the best of what your recipes are. I'm just gonna do mine as Ruby2, or I guess maybe Ruby Shapeless would be better, just so I know, but yeah, Ruby Shapeless dot JSON. Uh, dot JSON is very important. Go to mod tutorial, uh, or tutorial mod, I guess, source, main, resources, assets, uh, your mod ID, recipes, and press OK. And we should see it down here, Ruby Shapeless. And if we exit out of Ruby Shapeless and then double click it again, we should have the correct syntax. Um, like I said, you, you'll need an extension if you want to see this colored stuff, but it won't really matter. It's not important, uh, just for visual appeal. So anyway, let's move on now. So. We can see up here that this is different from before. We had crafting shaped, but this is crafting shapeless. So that lets us know that this is indeed a shapeless recipe. And you can see here that there is no pattern, like I mentioned. Uh, right here we had a pattern, and in this one we just have ingredients. And that's because, like I said, shapeless recipes don't have a shape. So you really, it's a lot simpler. You just have to define the ingredients that are inside of the crafting recipe. So um, I have right here a little guideline. So come down to ingredients and the first item here, I'm going to, this is gonna be a second recipe if you wanted to make a Ruby block, um, just for you know modding tutorial purposes. Um, so replace the mod ID with um, your mod ID if that's what you wanna use for your object. So uh, for this crafting recipe, I wanna make it that you have to combine, let's say, a ruby and an apple and you'd get a, a ruby block. I know that's really stupid, but I'm just doing it so that I can show you guys how to use both objects from your mod and Minecraft. So uh, for the ruby, I'd add TM for my, um, my mod ID and then for objects, ruby. And then for the second item down here, I will be adding Minecraft as the mod ID because we're using a vanilla object. And instead of the object here, we will be putting apple. So in this case, what I've defined here is that when you put a ruby and an apple anywhere inside of the crafting table, it will make something. And we need to define what that is right now in results. So instead of mod ID, mine will be my mod tag, so TM. And then, like I said before, this will be making the ruby underscore block. And we're just gonna have it make one. So um, right now, if we were to launch the game, you know, put two, a ruby and an apple in the crafting table, it would work. But what happens if you wanna add two apples, for example? So you want one ruby and two apples. Well, there's no way to define a count. You can see if we put count under here, uh, it like, would get an error, so it doesn't actually work. 
So instead of adding accounts, we're just gonna have to monotonously add the same object multiple times, which I know is annoying, but it's just something you gotta do with this new system. So in this case, we want uh, two apples. So we'll just copy and paste this down here uh, and move this back a little bit. And if we save, oh, and make sure to add a, um, a little comma after this uh, curly brace. Um, and if we save, this should essentially say that if we add two apples and one ruby to the crafting table, it will make our designated item. So let's launch Minecraft and check this out and make sure it's working. All right, so we're back inside of the game again and let's test out our recipe. So if we come up to the crafting table and we take our two apples, I know this is like the dumbest recipe ever, but two apples and a ruby. You can see that we do get our block of ruby and again, it is a shapeless recipe. So you can put these anywhere you want in the crafting table, any order, mix and match and it will actually give you your recipe. So we can just make that and just to test this out. Our block does act as normal, we can break it. So yeah, now we know that our shapeless recipe is working. All right, so now you guys know how to make your own custom crafting recipes. And before I go, I wanted to show you a really helpful resource that I use a lot. And if you come down here to the description, there will be a link to this one page right here. It's just called crafting. Uh, I, I found it uh, on chance and it's actually really, really helpful. So it uses the new JSON system, but essentially you can only use vanilla items, unfortunately, but it does give you a basic idea of the syntax of the JSON crafting recipes. So what you do is you can drag and drop anything. Like let's say, put a stone here, a grass block here, and a dirt block here, and then you want that to output a gold ore block, uh, then it'll actually make that into a custom crafting recipe here that you can use like in your coding, and uh, you can decide if it's shapeless or not, which will totally change the recipe. Um, and you can also decide exactly where it's placed um, within the actual crafting recipe. And it's really awesome, and it helps a lot, especially if you don't know the actual Minecraft vanilla, like block tags so yeah just wanted to share that resource that'll be in the description it's very helpful for when you're doing recipes so that's about it for crafting recipes in the next episode i'll be talking about smelting which is a little bit separate but yeah thanks so much for watching if you'd like a little bit of help or support be sure to check out the github page or our discord in the description there's lots of java and minecraft modders down there but yeah thanks so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next episode